Today we're going to talk about the most private of subjects, internal dialogue. So stick around. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer and welcome to my writing channel. Today, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the subject of internal dialogue, the stuff that's going on in a character's head. And I know this can be a frustrating, confusing subject for certain writers, so I thought I would break it down for you, help you understand it, and hopefully you'll come out of this video ready to write some internal dialogue. So I think the best way to understand internal dialogue is by first getting a clear overview of what regular dialogue is. So regular dialogue Dialogue, we all know what it is. It's the spoken word in your story. And what you might not know, however, is that there are two types of dialogue. There is direct dialogue and there is indirect dialogue. Now, when we're talking about direct dialogue, this is the most obvious type. This is the stuff that appears in quotes. It comes right from the character's mouth. We see it on the page or we hear it on the screen. Whatever it is, we get this, we get it verbatim, and we get it exactly as it is. Now, there is also indirect dialogue, and this is a little different. This is dialogue that doesn't appear in quotes. You might use indirect dialogue for a number of different reasons. One of the most common reasons is if you're going to summarize something that a character says. And you might do this because say you have um, some events that go down in your story, your heroes, maybe they, they, they fight a bunch of monsters, they rescue a village, and then they go to the next town. And when they get to the next town, they, they end up talking with the mayor and the mayor asks them, well, what happened at the village? And instead of having your characters go through the dialogue of every little detail that just happened that the audience already saw and they're already well aware of, you might just have something where you say, the heroes explain to the mayor what happened, and that'll cover it. I mean, that's just indirect dialogue. We don't actually get to hear the dialogue or see it or whatever, but it's there, it serves its purpose, and it does a great job of summarizing something that the audience is already aware of. It saves the story from getting redundant. Yet another reason you might use indirect dialogue is if you're writing for a younger audience and you don't want to expose them to any harsh language. For instance, if you're writing a scene and you say, Bill stubbed his toe and yelled fuck at the top of his lungs, that probably wouldn't fly in a middle grade novel. So you would want to instead try something like, Bill stubbed his toe and cursed at the top of his lungs. It conveys the same meaning, it sends the same message, but you're using indirect dialogue as a means of protecting your younger audience. Now that you understand the two types of dialogue, we're going to switch gears, we're going to take a look at internal dialogue. And from this point on in the video, I'm going to refer to internal dialogue as thoughts. It's just an easier way of doing things. But there are two types of thoughts, and the first one is direct thoughts, and then you also have indirect thoughts. Now, direct thoughts thoughts are the immediate intimate thoughts that go on inside your character's head. These will usually appear on the page in italics and they should take place in the present tense, even if your story takes place in the past tense. And this is important because when you are conveying direct thoughts, you're going to have them on the page, they're going to jump out at the reader, they're just going to they're just going to draw the reader into the character's head immediately and intimately. This is very important and if you do it well, it can have a lot of impact. Now to better illustrate what I mean by direct thoughts, let's take a look at an example. So we'll start our example with some narration and we'll say, Sarah entered the kitchen and found a blood stain on the floor. Now this is just pure narration, it's just explaining what's going on, what action is being taken. There's no dialogue, no thoughts. But we'll add some direct thoughts into it. We'll say, Sarah entered the kitchen and found a blood stain on the floor. Why is there blood on my kitchen floor? I must be seeing things. Notice that what we added, it's, first of all, it's in italics to signal that it's a direct thought, and it also takes place in the present tense, even though the narration that came before it took place in the past tense. That present tense is important, it really draws us into the moment, it, it makes it exciting for the reader. There are a lot of benefits to using direct thoughts. They're a great way to build the connection between your reader and the character. They're a great way to up the intensity, build immediacy, just drive your story faster and it's just, it's an effective thing to use when you have big moments in your story, so keep that in mind. Now, indirect thoughts are not as flashy or as exciting as the direct thoughts, but they do serve an important purpose in your story, and I'll get to that in a second. For now, you need to understand that indirect thoughts, they are not going to be in italics, and they are going to be usually in the past tense if your story takes place in the past tense. So, let's go back to the example I gave earlier. Sarah entered the kitchen and found a blood stain on the floor, but this time we'll add on indirect thoughts. We'll say, Sarah entered the kitchen and found a blood stain on the floor. 
Why was there blood in her kitchen? She had to be seeing things. Now notice that these are basically the same as the direct thoughts we saw in the previous example. All I did was just remove the italics and put it in past tense. Now the advantage to doing this, the advantage to using indirect thoughts is that it can keep a steady pace with your narration. So as you, you merge from that narration into your indirect thoughts, there's no italics or anything else that makes you jump and makes you say like, okay, things are switching gears here. You're just moving along, you're keeping a steady pace, and if you do this properly, you can merge from the narration to the indirect thoughts, and then you can move back into narration. And that to me is the biggest advantage of using indirect thoughts. You get to maintain the pace of your storytelling. You don't have to break things up. It, and I think it works best if you have low stakes situations. So for instance, the scene I was talking about, the, the Sarah walking into the kitchen, seeing the blood stain, depending on where this takes place in your story, it could be a major important scene, or it can be something that's you know, not a big deal. For instance, if you had a situation where she's been suspecting that there's a killer on the loose or something like that, you might want to up the intensity, go with the direct thoughts, take us right into her mind, right into the immediate moment, and roll with that. But if this is a situation where it's not a big deal, maybe her husband just cut his hand while he was chopping onions, or uh, maybe somebody, maybe the blood is actually wine, somebody spilled something. If it's a low stakes situation, just roll with the internal dialogue. Don't draw any more attention to it than you need to, and just keep the pace. One of the key things to remember when you're choosing between direct and indirect thoughts is that you want to find a proper balance in your story between them. Because if you overdo it with direct thoughts, you risk annoying your reader if they see italics on every page, or at the very least, you risk diminishing the impact of these direct thoughts. You don't want to do that, so you need to incorporate indirect thoughts as well. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, how often do you use direct thoughts in your writing? let me know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. Keep your internal dialogue to yourself. And as always, remember to keep on writing.